Hi everyone, it's Bex. Thanks for dropping by for today's video, which is a variation on the try a chapter tag format. I have five books here that have been sitting on my TBR shelf for a long time. And when I got them, I was excited to read them, but it's been so long now that I'm really not sure how I'm gonna feel about them. So usually with try a chapter tags, people pick a certain number of books off of their TBR shelf, they'll read a chapter from each and then decide what book to read next. In my case, I'm using this to decide whether or not I'm unhauling these books. And uh, most of them are pretty large and when I was trying to film the thumbnail, they almost fell over. So I managed to scratch myself a bit on my neck and chest. So yeah, those red lines are from me trying to keep the books from falling all over the floor. Anyway, I've done the traditional try a chapter format before and it took me way longer to read each of the chapters, wrap up my thoughts. So for this one, I wanna keep it more casual, which is why I'm filming in a different location because I wanna be reading these books throughout the day and sort of taking my time, not forcing myself to read them back to back to back. So this is gonna be sort of vlog style, but not quite, just to give me that time and uh, make it a bit more relaxing than it might be if I did it the standard way. I'll let you know the five books that I'll be testing out today if you didn't already see them in the thumbnail and then I'll come back each time to share my thoughts and of course wrap it all up at the end and let you know what books are getting cut. These first two books have been on my TBR pile since before Lesson I started booktube. They've been here since before I even called it a TBR pile. The first one that I'm going to be testing out is House of Leaves by Mark Z. Danielewski. This one you definitely have seen around on booktube and it, it's uh, catching the light pretty well here. This is a monster book, very floppy, which I love, of course. I originally saw this in Borders back in the day, RIP Borders. This attracted me because it's done in a very odd way. Not quite mixed media, but just different formatting. There's thing, passages that are crossed out. There's uh, pictures and whatnot. There's pages that look like this. So I was attracted to that style. However, this is a fiction horror book that I have heard people describe as one of the weirdest books they have ever read. And me and weird don't always mix. I feel like when I picked this up originally back in the day, I was more up for something like that and I have definitely moved away from that sort of story now. So I'm going to read the first bit. There's a prologue I think, so I'll probably read the prologue and the first chapter and see if I can get an idea of the style and if it's really going to be worth sticking with because I'm, I'm just afraid I'm not going to like it that much anymore. The other book that I've had for way too long is The Mysterious Flame of Queen Loana by Umberto Eco. This is a translated from the Italian and it is historical fiction. I know the main character in this book, he can't remember anything from his personal life. He just remembers things from books that he's read. And so he goes back to the family home, something like that, and he's looking through things to remind himself and he starts to see things or imagine things in this comic book style, which is why the cover looks like this. And I was interested in this because back in the day, a friend of mine said, I really like Umberto Eco, you should check out his books. But then I was also flipping through it and there's actual comic book pictures in here. And I thought that was kind of fun, a little different than usual. So that was what originally attracted me to it. However, I'm just not sure if this storyline is gonna interest me. And I've never read anything else by Umberto Eco, so maybe his writing style will just, I'll really jive with it, but if not, this one's probably gonna get cut. These other three I did acquire post starting booktube, but all of them I've had for almost eight years, if not eight years at this point. The first one is actually a gift, and it's Stranger in a Strange Land by Robert A. Heinlein. This is a classic sci-fi novel that I was given as a birthday gift back in 2012. Yeah, so it's been a while. And I just haven't felt the huge draw to read it, but at the same time, I don't just wanna unhaul it without giving it a try because it was a gift. I talked about this earlier this year in a different video and said I was a bit worried that because it was published in the early 1960s, 
written by a white man, classic sci-fi that it would be a bit sexist, misogynistic, something like that. And it, I wasn't really interested in reading something like that. And the I did have somebody comment and say, yeah, you're not wrong. It's definitely in there, those tones. So I'm worried I won't like it. And for that reason, I am wanting to unhaul it. However, because it was a gift, I do want to at least give it a try. So I will read the first little bit of this and decide one way or another. Then we have a book by a very famous author, and that is The Blind Assassin by Margaret Atwood. I got this at a library book sale a long time ago. It was one of those books that there was copies everywhere because living in Canada, when Margaret Atwood publishes a book, everybody buys it and then people don't keep books. So they just, there were so many of them and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna give it a shot. However, it's freaking huge and it is historical fiction family drama, which can work for me. I, I can absolutely can love historical fiction. I can enjoy a family drama, but it's just so big and I've had it for so long at this point that I'm just not sure if I'm really feeling it. So if the writing captures me, if the story pulls me in, I'll keep it. Otherwise, it's out. This last book, I feel like it, it mocks me a little bit every time I lock eyes on it on my TBR shelf. It's 1Q84 by Haruki Murakami, another huge book. There's definitely a theme here because, I mean, if you're gonna commit to a book, it's really easy to commit to something that's 350 pages. It's a lot more work to commit to something this big when the font is quite small, the pages are quite thin, like this is almost a thousand pages long. And at the time when I originally saw it, I was still in my big book phase. I had heard good things about Haruki Murakami and I was much more open to the idea of reading books that sort of played in the fantasy, magical realism, sci-fi arena. This one, I've heard so many different ideas of what genre it's in. It's definitely fiction. There are elements of fantasy, magical realism. I've heard other people say it's more of a sci-fi lean. So all of those make me a bit nervous now because I'm definitely not someone to pick up a book like that so much anymore. That being said, you never know. I read The Enchanted by Renee Denfeld a few years ago and that definitely has elements of magical realism in it and I loved that book. So it's I shouldn't write everything off just because it has that fantastical element to it, but this is a lot. This is a commitment. It's a beautiful edition and I really like seeing it on my shelves, but at this point I also don't like seeing it on my shelves. So now you know what I'm going to be tackling today. I'm gonna read them in the order I just talked about them. So I'll be starting with House of Leaves and I'll be back to let you know what I think. Well, this book was odd yet intriguing, which is good and bad because one, I was half convinced I was going to unhaul it, and now I'm really not sure. So there's there's a lot of things going on with this, the first of which is that the word house always appears in blue, even in the text itself, uh, and I feel like that was something I noticed on the cover but also didn't notice until I started reading it and actually seeing it in blue on the pages was when I picked up on it. This book has so many layers, <laughs> and there's the editors who supposedly put this book together and made it accessible for all of us. Then there is an introduction by this other character called Johnny, and his text always appears in a particular font, like a courier font. So, and he is talking about how he came across this, how there was this old guy who died in an apartment and his buddy lived in the apartment building and his uh, the guy, the old guy had no family, no friends, and they were just gonna clean out his apartment. So his friend goes in there before Goodwill or whoever comes to take the stuff and they find this manuscript thing. It sort of causes him to go into this downward spiral as he's reading it. It's called the Navinson Record, Navidson Record. So the beginning introduction is like, I don't know, 20 pages or so of Johnny just laying out this situation and saying, you know, watch out, these things are gonna, it's gonna turn you into something that you don't want. I wish I hadn't gone when my friend called me. I wish I'd never come across this. I have nightmares now, I can't sleep. And in the book on the title page, we have 
Mark Z. Danielewski over here, and then it says House of Leaves with House appearing in blue. And then we have by, by Zampano, which is the old guy that died. And then also introduction and notes by Johnny Truant, which is the guy that wrote the introduction that I read. So it's like they came across this Navitson record and Zampano read through it and made notes and whatnot. And then Johnny read through it and made notes. So there's lots of footnotes. And it seems like as we keep going, things are going to get weirder and weirder. And that's where stuff starts to like the pages start to get wacky because the first bit like the introduction was very normal other than the creepy like horror-esque factor and then we have the Navidson record and then it starts and the first I read the first chapter of that as well because I just wanted to get a feel for what that was going to be like because that is the book of the book that's 529 pages or so it's written almost like an academic piece like an analysis the Navidson record some sort of film or films this guy who's a photojournalist lives in this house and it's it starts with this video of him moving around the house and showing like here's this door going outside through the window showing where the house ends and then if you open up the door it's like the room goes on it's not even really a room it's like a hallway is bigger than the actual house and the mystery around that and it's cold and then there's flashes of this guy being in there saying he's lost and he doesn't know if he's gonna make it out so there's definitely this creepiness factor to it which is intriguing to me even johnny was saying in his introduction there's things that zampano references that aren't real and then there's other things in it that seem very real like real people uh, people who actually exist in our reality in my reality exist in this book as well so it's it's made to feel very lifelike if this thing wasn't as massive I feel like I would just want to keep reading it right now because I am intrigued. But like, do I want to keep it? Or would I just get it from the library? I don't know. Yeah, not a very solid conclusion on that one, but I'm gonna wait and see how the other ones turn out and then proceed based on my feelings on the other ones as well. On to book two. The Mysterious Flame of Queen Luana is officially an unhaul. It was pretty easy for me to come to that conclusion. I read the first chapter, which was about 27 pages, and I felt it gave me a pretty good idea of what to expect in terms of the writing style and where the story was going to go to some degree. And it was really just the writing style that I didn't jive with at all. The main character, who's an older man, wakes up in the hospital. He's been in a coma. There's some sort of incident. Part one is called The Incident, but we don't know what it is. It seems like everything that he remembers relates back to a book that he's read or history that he knows. When the doctor is trying to ask him questions about his, like if he's married, does he remember if he has kids, he doesn't. And it's causing him to think about different lines that he remembers from books. And so he quotes those instead phrases that have been seen throughout literature, that sort of thing. And I just didn't like the way that was formatted. It does seem like this book was heading in a direction where the main character was going to go back home and sort of look through things to jog his memory, his personal memories, and follow the history since he was born. And from an Italian perspective, that might be kind of cool, but I could find that in another book. The pictures would have also been cool to see, but I'll just flip through and look at them. It seems like there's going to be, as he's going through history, different pictures and posters and things popping up as well as this sort of comic book style eventually. So I'll just flip through that and look at those and I can confidently get rid of this one. And that is the first two books down. I read those back to back so I'm going to take a bit of a break now. Probably actually going to have some lunch and then after I do that I'll start in on the last three. I have now read the first four chapters in Stranger in a Strange Land and I'm not feeling very confident about this one. That got me to page 27. Uh, the chapters, at least the first three, were very short. And then the fourth one was a bit longer. Uh, and I have a bit of an understanding of where the story is. But this is a hard sci-fi as far as I understand. So there's a lot of things happening in the story that uh, you don't really understand in detail. It's just part of the world that they live in. There has not been a particular year stated for when it's supposed to take place. It just seems like it's the future. There's definitely technology that implies this modern existence. The book has introduced a lot of people, but we seem to be sort of focusing on three characters at the moment, one of them being Valentine Michael Smith, who's this guy on the main cover. And he was born on Mars 
They believe he is the child of some scientists that were sent in this ship 25 years ago, and they had eight scientists who had been chosen because of their particular uh, compatibility together, their knowledge and how that was going to help them. However, when they did actually get to Mars and go down to the surface, they lost contact with them. And then 25 years later, this other ship gets sent. The ship finds the wreck of the original ship and then eventually finds Valentine Michael Smith, who's been raised by Martians and they bring him back to Earth. So right now he's sort of in this pod thing because his body isn't acclimatized to the environment. And a nurse at the hospital that he's in uh, decides to go sneak in and see him because there's no women are allowed. And she's sort of intrigued by him because the way he communicates, it's a bit it's a bit different, it's a bit weird. As I was reading this, I feel like I'm not that interested in this, this story. I feel like I would have been more interested in the story of the people in that original ship, the eight people who traveled to Mars originally. I would have cared more about their story, not about this son raised by Martians coming back to Earth. There's definitely some sort of sexist language that's being used on Jill, particularly by her newspaper journalist reporter boyfriend. He calls her honey, honey lamb, little one. I think he calls her sweetheart at one point. And this is all within one scene, so it's a bit much, but I don't know if it's the character. I feel like it's more the character, just based on other stuff that I've been reading. So I don't think that's necessarily the problem for me. I think it's just that I don't really care. And then I decided to go on Wikipedia and started reading the plot summary of the book. And it sounds like it's going to get really, really weird. And it just does not sound like something I care to read about. I'm now going to remove the bookmark because there's no point in having it in there now and move on to the next book. I gotta say, I'm a bit disappointed by how this one turned out. It started off very promisingly. The first line of the entire book is, is intriguing. It says, 10 days after the war ended, my sister Laura drove a car off a bridge. I was like, oh, okay. And I think that's why I originally picked this book up because I read that first sentence, that first page, and I was intrigued. That first little bit, because the chapters in this are also very short, was interesting because you don't know if she did it on purpose or if it was an accident, if she had some sort of medical episode. And this story is told from her sister's point of view, looking back many years later on everything. It's interspersed with snippets from newspaper articles that help give context to the story. And then there's also bits from a book called The Blind Assassin. So this is a book within a book. And The Blind Assassin was something that our main character's sister, the one who drove off the bridge, wrote, but it wasn't published until she had died. So it was published posthumously. And I really didn't like the snippets from the book. And I looked ahead to see if the snippets of the book were just at the beginning or if it was gonna be throughout. And unfortunately it is throughout the book for something this long to have what seems like half of it be the book within the book that I don't like the writing style of, it's not worth it. I like the parts that were from Iris's point of view, the sister who lived, who's telling the story. I liked her voice and it's very easy to tell her chapters versus the chapters from the book within the book, um, but it's not worth it. So that's unfortunate because I was a bit hopeful for this one, especially with the first bit being really good, but I can't put myself through that if half of it's going to be that. Those portions read very much like literary fiction, very hoity-toity. There's no quotes in it. It's it's written in second person sometimes. I started, my eyes started glazing over. I didn't even read the full excerpt, and there was multiple excerpts in a row that were just from the Blind Assassin book. So I just jumped ahead till I got back to an iris section and confirmed that yes, I do like these parts, but I don't like them enough to override all the other stuff that I would have to leave. So this one is also going, which whatever, that's fine. It's part of the part of the process, it's just clearing off some space. I'll feel lighter after all of this. It's not even 3.30 yet, but we're really starting to lose the light. So this is a good time to wrap this video up. 
I read a chapter and a bit of 1Q84. I took off the dust jacket because it's really thin material and it's just getting in the way. Typically I do actually read books with the dust jacket on it if it does have it. I know some people always take them off. I usually keep them on. I, I kind of consider it weird to take it off because I like seeing the book how it was meant to be displayed, but other people probably think I'm weird for not taking it off. <laughs> anyway, little tangent there. This, I am still intrigued by this. The first chapter follows Aomame, who is a young woman living in Tokyo and she's trying to make her way to a hotel in the downtown area for a client meeting, but she is stuck in a taxi on an elevated expressway. There seems to be some sort of accident up ahead and they're not moving anywhere, so she's trying to figure out what she's gonna do about it. The taxi driver points out that there's actually a staircase that you can use to get down off the expressway and offers that as an option to her and she's considering it and before she actually gets out and leaves, he says something along the lines of things are not as they seem, but there's still always one reality, which is very weird because there's really no context for why he would say that to her. But it gets lodged in her brain a little bit and the chapter ends with her climbing over the gate to then go down the stairs. This takes place in the year 1984, but it's some sort of alternate reality or at least parallel universes. I did go onto Wikipedia just to get a little bit more idea about the plot and they describe it as a dystopia which is interesting because I haven't really heard anybody call it a dystopia. It's more the other genres that I mentioned earlier in this. I kind of flipped forward a bit and I saw the next scene or at least one of the next scenes with Aomame and I was very intrigued by what was happening in that scene for those of you who have read the book. I'm sure you'll know what I'm talking about because I was not expecting that to happen. So I'm still interested in this. It's just so intimidating because it's so massive, but I think it's going to stay on my shelf. So after today's little experiment, I have decided to unhaul three books, Stranger in a Strange Land, The Mysterious Flame of Queen Luana, and The Blind Assassin. These just aren't going to be for me anymore. The two I have decided to keep are, of course, 1Q84 and House of Leaves. I feel like I should be setting myself some sort of limit on how long I have to actually read these before I need to unhaul them, but probably not going to do that. This just has such an interesting, creepy air about it that I'm intrigued enough to want to keep reading it. And this is sort of the same way. It doesn't have that horror vibe that this one does, but there's still just something about it that I'm curious to find out. If you have read either of these books and you have opinions on them and my decision to keep them and you don't think I would like them very much, let me know. And then with the other three, I mean, if you've read them, you can certainly share your thoughts on them, but I'm pretty solidly in the they're, they're going. It's not worth it for me. I do have a list of five or six more books that I want to do this same thing with. I chose these original five just because they've been on my shelves for so long that I wanted to really make a decision about them. The next five or six I haven't had as long but I'm still questioning whether or not I'll actually like them. So if you do like this style of video, let me know and I'll work on getting the next one out a little faster. As always, all of our links are in the down bar. You can go check those out if you feel so inclined. Thank you guys very much for watching and I'll see you later.